Hello, my name is Snuff. Why do third party games sell poorly on the Wii U? I'll be trying to answer that question in this video. Developers say it's because customers don't bother buying their games, they only buy Nintendo games. The consumer says it's the developer's fault for porting and making crappy games which have missing features. Um, so in this video, I'll be taking a look at all of the third party games on the Wii U and having a look at where they went wrong and why they sold poorly on the Wii U. So I'm going to start off with the launch third party games. Now I'm not going to include every single launch game, I'm not going to include every single third party game but I'm just going to include the games that got it drastically wrong. Um, so start off with Black Ops 2, that was a launch game for the Wii U. It was launched a few days after the other versions due to the console not coming out. It came with no Nuketown 2025 pre-order bonus map, so people rightly assumed that the Wii U version wouldn't receive DLC, so stayed away from the Wii U version. And when it came to the first DLC pack, Revolution, and when we didn't get it, a lot of people said, stuff it, I'm just going to trade in my Black Ops 2 version or if they didn't buy the, the um, Wii U version of Black Ops 2 yet, then they didn't bother buying it because they didn't get DLC. Um, so that was one of the main reasons why Black Ops 2 sold poorly on the system was a lack of DLC. And FIFA 13 was another launch game for the Wii U, but it didn't have Ultimate Team, which is a large part of FIFA these days. So a lot of people said, stuff it. I'm not going to bother buying the Wii U version, why should I, um, when I can just buy it on another system that I own. And that is a large reason or a large part into why third party games sell poorly on the Wii U. Most people own multiple consoles, so if the Wii U version of the third party game is rubbish and has missing features, then of course they're not going to be picking up the Wii U version because they're getting less for their money. Um, so on to other third party games, Mass Effect 3 was another launch game for the Wii U, but this was launched at the same time as when um, the Mass Effect bundle came out for the other consoles where it included every single Mass Effect game in the franchise and for the same price. So of course people aren't going to be picking up one game um, for the same price for what they could get the whole bundle for. It just it didn't make sense. I don't understand why EA didn't just bring over the bundle to the Wii U. I would have happily bought it. Instead, we got Mass Effect 3 and we had to sit through a 10 minute video um, just to get us tuned into the Mass Effect storyline. That was just completely ridiculous. Why bring over a game and charge it as the same price as the bundle? You're just sending that game to die, and that's why Mass Effect 3 sold poorly on the Wii U. Assassin's Creed 3 was another launch game for the Wii U. I actually recently bought this game for three quid on Amazon. It cost me £5 in total um, with posting and packaging. Um, but Assassin's Creed 3 on the Wii U only received two pieces of DLC. It didn't receive the rest. And this led to poor sales for Black Flag because we didn't get all of the DLC for Assassin's Creed 3. So people assumed that we wouldn't get DLC for Assassin's Creed Black Flag. So they decided to pick it up for another console. Um, 007 Legends was another launch game for the, um, the Wii U. But no Wii Remote support and bad reviews from the other versions put off a lot of Golden Eye Wii owners and a lot of Bond fans from picking up this game. 007 Legends was released a couple of months after the other version so um, a lot of people either picked up on the other consoles because it came out first or um, because of the bad reviews that the other versions got they didn't bother with the Wii version of 007 Legends. Although launch games like Darksiders 2 and Batman Arkham City Armored Edition didn't have any major problems these games were already out on the other consoles months or even years 
before they came out on the Wii U. Most people own another console apart from um, Nintendo, so they would have just most likely bought those games on those consoles. Wii U gamepad features weren't enough to convince people to buy these games again. And that is a large reason why third party games, especially the launch games, sold poorly on the Wii U. There was nothing new there. Most of these games came out months or even years before they came out on the Wii U. And like I said before, most people have multiple consoles, so they've already picked up those games for the other consoles and they didn't see the inclusion of the Wii U gamepad as a reason to buy the game again. Um, so I think if third parties actually brought over new games for the Wii U instead of porting games that came out years ago on the other systems, then maybe more people would have bought um, third party games on the Wii U at that time. Um, I think them porting over games that came out months or years before they came out on the Wii U um, set the president pretty much. Um, it just kind of, for me, it suggested that they were just lazy and they didn't want to do anything new for the Wii U, so they just thought they'll just port over the games that they've already made um, just to see if they can make a little bit of extra money on it. And for me, that was just a terrible attitude. I think they should have just done a new game for the Wii U just to test the water. Um, there's no point bringing over games that people have already played before on another system. Now, it was great for people like myself that only owned the Wii in the previous generation, but most people own another console apart from the Wii or Wii U, so of course they've already played the vast majority of the games that came out on the Wii U at the launch. Um, so on to um, other third party games now. Injustice Gods Among Us. The Wii U version didn't receive all of the DLC. It missed out on some of the DLC which put off a lot of people from picking up the game. And I do believe they released a Ultimate Edition where they included all of the DLC that came out for Injustice. But the Wii U didn't receive that game. Um, Neither Speed Most Wanted You. Now the game itself was actually very good. It's probably one of the best third party games out on the system. But with little marketing by EA and the game releasing months after the other versions and at full price compared to the other versions price which went down, it didn't sell well at all. And I think the same thing will happen with Watch Dogs and Project Cars as well. And those games are coming out months after the other versions. So the other versions price will have gone down by then. And if you're releasing Watch Dogs at full price. When you can pick up the game for a lot cheaper on another system. Then it's just pretty much sending the game to die. And that's what happened with Need for Speed Most Wanted on the Wii U. Sniper Elite V2. This game had no online play and DLC and it released a year after it released on the other platforms which led to it selling poorly. Splinter Cell Blacklist, online play suffered from a game breaking glitch that Ubisoft tried once to fix and then just didn't bother trying to fix it after that. Um, there was also no offline co-op play. Um, so again, most people own multiple consoles and if they see that a certain version is missing out on a feature, then they're going to pick up another version where they're going to get all of the features. And that's why, for me, Splinter Cell Blacklist didn't sell as much as it could have done. Now this next game is probably the most famous third party game that screwed over Wii U owners and that is Rayman Legends. The game was delayed from February 2013 to September 2013 so that Ubisoft could finish the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions. It was originally going to be a Wii U exclusive but Ubisoft decided not to keep it as an exclusive. I think the Wii U version was already finished um, in February. I think they could have launched the game in February but they decided to delay the game for five, six months that they could complete 
the other versions and so that they could release all of the versions at the same time. Now the game did sell the most on the Wii U, but it would have sold a lot more if it stayed a Wii U exclusive and it released in February. At that time, not many games came out in February 2013. I think you had just had the launch games and maybe a game that came out in January. So Wii U owners were looking for a new game. And Rayman Legends would have been the perfect fit for that. And I think it would have sold a lot if it stayed in its February slot. But Ubisoft with Pricks, they decided to move the um, game to September. And I think they only have themselves to blame for the low amount of sales compared to what they would have got if they just released the game in February. On to Batman Arkham Origins now. And four weeks before the game came out... Nintendo had to refund all people who bought a season pass because the devs at Warner Brothers or I can't remember the um, developers who made Batman Arkham Origins for the Wii U. I think it might have been Rocksteady. I might be wrong on that. But they decided that they didn't want to bring DLC over to the Wii U version even though they said that they would. And that's why they did make the season pass. And then they just decided to take the season pass away. And Nintendo had to refund people um, for this. They had a certain amount of money in their eShop account or something like that. I think we did get the Deathstroke pre-order DLC. Um, but I think that was the only DLC that the um, version got. And Call of Duty Ghosts. Large peop large amount of people didn't buy this game because of the lack of support we got for Black Ops 2. And that is all of the third party games that I'm going to go into within this video. Um, I think third party companies only have themselves to blame when they bring over games that have missing features and then those games sell poorly. If these companies actually put in the effort, actually made games which had all of the features and had actually exclusive stuff as well then maybe these games would have sold better than what they did and um, it's like what I said before with the launch games what's the point in bringing over games that already came out on the other consoles months or even years before they came out on the Wii U it didn't make much sense for me at all not only did they bring over games that, they, that came out on the other consoles months or years before, they charged full price for those games as well, which was completely ridiculous. It's like these third party companies wanted their games to sell poorly on the Wii U so that they didn't make any more games for the system. Um, I think Nintendo also have a bit of a part to blame for why third party games sell poorly on the Wii U. I think they could have done more to promote it. I think they could have just done a third party direct where they got people from Ubisoft, Activision, um, Warner Brothers to promote their games. Um, I know they did this when the Wii U first launched, but they could have done it throughout the Wii U's life cycle. Um, it's like they didn't really need to include it within their own directs. They could have just done separate directs for third party games. And I think this would have done more to promote those games on the system. And it might have led to more sales for those games. Um, and they could have also tweeted out these games as well. It's not hard just to say, oh yeah, Batman Arkham City Armored Edition is out now on the Wii U. Buy it now from the eShop or from blah de blah or Call of Duty Ghost is come out for the Wii U today. Get it to receive motion control gameplay, second screen second screen gameplay. Um, so I think Nintendo could have done more to promote these third party games, but for me, the large reason why third party games so poorly on the Wii U is because these games they, they have either came out years or months before on the other consoles or these versions have missing features um, and they are still charged at the same full price. Um, so for me, if third party companies actually put in the effort um, in their Wii U versions, then maybe these Wii U versions would have sold poorly. But now, um, because these games didn't sell that much, a lot of the third party companies have decided to stop making their games on the Wii U. 
and it's a bit of a shame really i don't think it's the consumer consumer's fault why should we buy a game that is gamed that has missing features and that is still charged at the same full price as the other consoles and um, for me that was just a load of rubbish that's why third party games so poorly on the wii u it's not the consumers only buy nintendo games we only buy nintendo games because we don't get screwed over by nintendo within those games maybe if these third party companies actually put in the effort then maybe those games would have sold a lot better on the system so guys hope you have enjoyed this video it is a long one you probably would have seen a Call of Duty Ghost gameplay and you probably would have seen some Tekken Tag Tournament 2 gameplay as well for me Tekken Tag Tournament 2 is the best third party game on the Wii U because um, not only did we get all of the features that the other consoles got, we also got exclusive stuff as well. We got exclusive game modes and we got exclusive costumes as well. And for me, that is the route that all third party companies should have took with their third party games. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the end of this video. Let me know in the comment section below why you think third party games sell poorly on the Wii U. But until next time... I'm out of here for now. I really would appreciate if you guys hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm out of here for now. I'm slowly losing my voice. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.